6th of May in the year 1963, 32 signatory governments gathered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia to form what was previously known as the Organization of African Unity. Africa Day has since the year 1963 been commemorated annually. Good evening and welcome to Talk with the Nation, your leading panel discussion program. I'm, as usual, your host, Hilda Vasana Manjabo, and joined by Erika Ushona as our sign language interpreter. The African Union was, came into existence in the year 2002 and the African Union is currently comprised of 53 member states and has brought together the continent to collectively address the challenges the continent faces. In the year 2013, the African Union introduced a new vision and action plan called Agenda 2063. This formulated approach is aimed at how the continent should effectively learn from the lessons of the past, build on the progress now underway and strategically exploit all possible opportunities available in the short, medium and long term so as to ensure positive socio-economic transformation within the next 50 years. For the past three years, the talks for Agenda 2063 has gained momentum on the continental level with little felt domestically, hence the theme for this year, which is the domestication of Agenda 2063. How do we domesticate this vision and what is the importance of this? And for this discussion, I am joined this evening by Dr. Pea Mushalenga, who is our Deputy Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Talk with the Nation. Good evening, Hilda. Secondly, we are joined by His Excellency, Mr. Sid Al Al Delbari, who is the Algerian ambassador to Namibia. Good evening, Your Excellency, and welcome to Talk with the Nation. Good evening, Hilda. Good evening, viewers. Thirdly, we are joined by Her Excellency, Madame Sylvia Chalikosa, who is the Zambian High Commissioner to Namibia. Good evening, ma'am. Welcome to Talk with the Nation. Good evening, Hilda. Good evening, viewers. And finally, we are joined by a regular on Talk of the Nation, Mr. Fanuel Kapama, who is a political science lecturer at the University of Namibia. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening, Namibia. I'd like to ask my first question to you, Honorable Minister, and it is specifically that Africa is the only continent ever colonized by outsiders. Quickly take us through what that history has to do with the current state of affairs on the continent. Uh, thank you very much. As you know, this uh, colonial colonization of Africa was formalized at the Berlin Conference. So it meant different uh, type of colonization for different countries. As you know, for example, in our case, we were colonized by Germany. Later, when Germany was defeated after the First World War, we became a sea mandate treaty of the League of Nations. Mm -hmm. But all in all, this colonization has uh, created a sense of dependency on the continent to the former colonizers. Now, if you look to the way our economies are structured, we became dependent on the former colonial powers. Uh, in itself, colonization of Africa was a very bad thing because it really underdeveloped Africa. Although people are trying to say uh, the colonial powers were there to develop nations, in fact, la they largely underdeveloped Africa, largely taking uh, the wealth of African countries in raw forms to export them in order to be their own industries in their own countries. I'd like to ask you, Your Excellency, please to speak to us from the Algerian perspective in terms of your history or in terms of colonization. And today, if you compare where your country is at, what have you gained from that, if any? Thank you very much. Uh, as from the Algerian uh, perspective, you know, Algerian was uh, uh, colonized uh, in, uh, from 1830, and this from the French colonial power, and that uh, 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 colonial era lasted 132 years. And during that uh, uh, period, uh, Algerian people experienced very tough uh, uh, situation uh, uh, marked by hunger, by uh, uh, killing, by expropriation, by uh, uh, exile. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we uh, tried to uh, fought this 
uh, or to fight this col yeah. colonialism uh, through uh, uh, first, uh, uh, let's say, resistance, which lasted more than 15 years and led by our national hero, Emir Abdel Qader. And then there was a kind of a popular rebellion. Yeah. And after that, in the 20th century, that was the, the form of resistance was mainly uh, peaceful through political means. Unfortunately, the French colonial power didn't hear the uh, claim of the Algerian people, which was then uh, compelled or obliged to resort to arm uh, from the 1st November 1954, mm -hmm. where the uh, national struggle were, uh, was uh, launched yeah. to uh, get our independence mm -hmm. in on the 5th of July 1962. Of course, you know, it's not easy to uh, erase the yeah. aftermath yeah, the colonial of past. the mm -hmm. uh, colonial yeah. uh, past. Because in, uh, I would say, in, in uh, uh, Africa I I in general, even if in, in Algeria, there are some uh, problems inherited from this uh, period. I uh, would mention uh, the uh, tribalism, regionalism, uh, and because uh, the uh, colonial power uh, was acting according to the uh, motto uh, divide to conquer. May I bring Thank in you Your Excellency from the Republic of Zambia? Specifically in your country, if you look at your country to date, colonialism has passed, but there are some legacies still visible. Can you highlight some of these for us, please? Yes, um, uh, from the Zambian perspective, uh, Zambia got its independence from the British um, colonial rule in um, October 1964. Mm. And um, as with every other African continent, I mean uh, African country Africa. that mm. was colonized, uh, Africa was targeted because of the rich um, resource endowment. Yeah. And um, in the Zambian case, um, what I can make reference to is that our copper was um, uh, used to um, further development of Zimbabwe mm. during the Federation of um, Rhodesia and Yasaland. And um, Zimbabwe then was um, southern Rhodesia, yeah. um, ended up uh, developing far much more than Zambia did. Mm. But um, notwithstanding that, we have not let the colonization period um, stifle us. We yeah. have still um, come to terms with it and we are trying to make progress. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you can see is the former colonial powers, the British, they still invest a lot in the country of Zambia as a way of uh, payback, if you like. Mr. Kapama, we've heard um, the minister and our excellency speak about underdevelopment, the legacies of coloni colonialization, um, disease, civil conflicts, you said specifically tribalization or tribalism specifically in Africa. Did this delay in us knowing our destiny? Because we're talking about Agenda 2063, our future. Yes. No, thank you very much, Hilda. Uh, just one indication on the legacy of colonialism is that uh, many people, especially our young people, mm. when they think about the history of Africa, then the impression that comes to their mind is that Africa only came to life with colonialism. Mm. There was an whereas Africa uh, before. Yeah, whereas uh, if you go into history, mm. Africa had a civilization of yeah. its own, yeah. including in science. If you talk about uh, Timbuktu, one of the world's oldest university mm. was in Africa. Yeah before modern medicine was not able to operate on human beings, there is uh, uh, evidence that in Africa they were operating yeah. on human beings. And uh, those that were operated on could lead a normal life yeah. thereafter. Yeah. So, and I think uh, the impact mm. of colonialism has reduced 
our vision. Yeah. To the extent that if we look into history, we only studied to visualize mm. Africa's existence as if through the first yeah. contact with uh, uh, the Western colonizers. When we are talking about the African vision and future, including something that we will speak about later on, mm. 2063, then we look at it more in relation to Africa with Europe yeah. next to it yeah. and supporting it. Let me just give you one example for the young viewers at home. Take an example of football. Mm. Take an example of Ivory Coast. And uh, many of its football players, Yaya Toure and so on, yeah. they are playing in Europe. And mm. all of us want to watch uh, Man City or any English team where there is African talent. Mm. But just try and think that I would, if a country such as Ivory Coast can produce such a lot of talent that mm. is making an impact internationally. If NBC now should announce that they are broadcasting the Ivorian League, mm. I think many young people will say thumbs down. Yeah. They would want to see yeah. the English. So, and, and I think that is the legacy yeah, of colonialism. I understand. Uh, it, it doesn't need to be a very big thing. Yeah. Just including very small things. 